If, if you want to bring it up, then I'm I'm not hiding it because I, I I do like wince when I move from side to side. <laughs> yes. So Kat is feeling rather tender today because she washed her her. Um, well, it's her up to you. Let, let's lady start garden. It and just... Her lady garden, yes, with uh, with with antibacterial <laughs> hand gel instead of soap. Because it's the same colour and it's the same bottle. I mean, we can all make those mistakes, Paul. I don't know. Who's going to Google uh, antibacterial stuff and find out that it's pure alcohol? Uh, exactly. Uh, I mean, wouldn't it be me? Wouldn't it be me either? Not my clacker bag with that kind of gear. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, there's the start of the show right there. <laughs> Fight for level, everybody. Fight for level. We're okay. Right. Are, are we? Are we okay? Are we, everyone okay? Everyone, give everyone good. Everyone just, um, just we clap hands, please. We clap hands. Yeah, That's right. yeah, yeah. We're here. That's good. Right. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. Let's uh, load the titles. You mean you? You put a flame fanny in my costumes. <laughs> Winston That's from Winston Still Game. Winston Still Game. <laughs> buying, buying a nude book. Um, Samson had having a pee under that before we go in to steal the Polis motor. Why don't we put my eight-year-old son under the back wheel? <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Uni Cats Uncut Podcast, where anything and everything goes. This is an absolute joy to work on because the people that we have on the show... We know very well and we're friends with them. But when you have them on the radio show, there's only so much you can say. There's only so much that you can talk about because we're radio friendly. Whereas here, absolutely anything goes. And we're delighted to have with us today to talk about all things naughty and crazy and daft and stupid. It's the one and only Paul Riley. Hey, Winston from Still Game. How are you, Mr. Riley? It's all good in the hood, man. All good. Um, just um, chaving a wall. You know what I mean? Just yes. getting on with it. Um, yeah. What about yourselves? Your good selves? Do you want to ask Kat about what we were just discussing? <laughs> um, Kat? Yeah. I think, see what you threw that to me there? <laughs> like a grenade? Kat, um, tell me about the Kerex. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we kind of touched on it before the show. Well, I never touched on it. <laughs> no, you never touched on it. No, you didn't. No, no. But um, Kat did, I didn't you, Kat? I mean, we you're used to. Such no, 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 no. But the thing is, though, can I just say to everybody here who hasn't heard, we were talking about national radio. So this is no big secret that we are discussing here. Everybody already knows about it. People are messaging us on Twitter and Facebook. Oh, my fanny is trending. <laughs> <laughs> So if you'd like to, to explain to, to Mr. Riley um, why, why, why your bits are trending just now. There was an incident a couple of days ago yeah, right. that, um, you know what it's like when you're in a rush and sometimes you've got to be at work and yes. you don't have time for a full shower. So you, no, wash, the, you wash the danger areas. Okay. Um, in my neck of the wood, I'm from Glasgow. We call it a Glasgow wash. I'm sure. Fair enough. I'm, I've heard of it. Yeah. Um, we've, we've got an Edinburgh equivalent. Ours as well, wet wipes. <laughs> we, would, we wouldn't use K-Rex. Well, I didn't know it was K-Rex. It looks like soap. Um, right. uh, basically, I, I scrubbed my danger areas <laughs> with uh, 99.9 kills all bacteria. Hand gel. Alcohol, right? Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's... Um, and what was the outcome of that? It, not good. Not great, um, okay. Nippy, it's nippy. Still suffering. I mean, yeah, this, this, only days, happened, this only happened a couple of days ago. This is four days later. I had to get <laughs> medical attention. Oh, she had, she, had to, she had to contact a pharmacist friend of hers and, and, and get advice. And the advice was? Don't do that again. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm glad we got that out in the open. Yeah. So you've got, you're salved up then. Yes, I'm okay. quite, I'm quite um, squishy. That's good, that's good. Nice squishy. and greasy. You and how's your crabs? <laughs> Can I, I thought I had crabs. When I was a younger lad, I, uh-huh. but I think it was somebody else who had it, and I had a wee itch, but not a big itch. Do you really? know what I mean by that? Well, I'm just... Because I, I think if you've got full-on crabs, Paul, you would know about it. But I, I had a tiny wee itch, but it turned out it was my pal that had them, and we happened to share a bed. Like a prawn? Yes. <laughs> so we, we happened to share a bed, so I think that I um, maybe got it a little bit, whereas he was actually crawling in them. All right, that's happy but days. Me, but, but I mean, we've all, we've all got stories to tell. We've all got a history, what? Mr. Riley. Have, get, have you ever had crabs? We've all got genitalia. <laughs> aye. Um, there's no question of that. Um, I had uh, crabs when I was in the jail, aye. Um, 
<laughs> your face. You were in the jail. Aye, aye. I was in the jail. I'm only kidding. All right. <laughs> What was this? I, I, in all the years that I've known Mr. Riley, I didn't know he was in the jail. What, what was it for? So, so you've not been in jail? I've, well, I've been in. I've been like um, there was one time that um, I was thinking it was my twenty first birthday, and um, I was at the uh, and a boozer at the top of Hope Street, and we came out and there was an Arctic lorry beside the Theatre Royal mm-hmm. uh, in Glasgow, um, and. I said to my pal, I said, I'm going to climb that and steal the letters off the Theatre Royal, right? <laughs> and then, so I climbed up the Arctic, I climbed up the Arctic lorry, and I got the T and the H, and I couldn't lean any further, so I did T and the H, and I came back down off the Arctic lorry, and I said to my pal, Mick, I said, what are we going to do now? And he went, why don't we steal a Polis motor? <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> okay! Hi! So we where, did, where did you find this? Where did I find it? Yeah. What do you mean? Like the police car, where was it? Well, we walked to Stuart Street Police Station, <laughs> right? And um, I've got the T and the H. For, this is my birthday. I've got the T and the H in my jacket. Uh-huh. And um, I, I, honest to God, this is true. I'm sorry, and having a pee outside. You know how the police thing comes out the wall like that? Aye, the sign. Police. Aye. Um, so I'm sorry, and having a pee under that before we go in to steal the police motor. And two, <laughs> two police came out. And they're like, for fuck's sake, got another one. <laughs> And I was caught by your rights, as they say in EastEnders. I don't know why I'd made, said that, but. And they took me inside and they went, right, what's your details? And I told them and all that. And the guy went, oh, it's your birthday. I went, aye, that's right. He says, what's the T and the H doing in there? By the way, my pals ran away shout, shouting, jail him <laughs> as he ran. <laughs> He went, oh, it's your birthday, aye. I went, that's right, aye, the teenage is just in there. And he went, right, well, happy birthday, get in that cell. And I was like, thanks very much. And I was in there for the night. Oh, so, wow. Um, aye. So, so so is it a blessing in disguise that they caught you I peeing under the sign? I learned a lot. Because if they it hadn't... It's hardly the Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but what I mean is, it's better getting nicked for peeing under a police sign and having a T and an H in your pocket than stealing a police car. So if you hadn't got caught at that point, well, exactly. you and your pal would have stolen a police car. Um, almost said, well, I couldn't drive at the time. That was the other thing he was going to have to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I... And how old were you? Uh, t- I'm sure it was my 21st, 22nd, maybe, some, somewhere around then. Uh, have I matured since? Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> what were your teenage years like then? Where did you grow up, first of all? I grew up in Milton, uh, which is in the north of Glasgow. Um, and um, but so I, um, where did I start? I don't know. I went, I, I was at uh, St. Augustine's Secondary School and um, I, I quite enjoyed um, English. Uh, I quite enjoyed um, but art, I, can, I can't draw my ass along the flare, right? <laughs> and, um, so why do it? I, well, it? This is the thing, though. But I was taught by nuns, right? Well, there was loads of different teachers, but two of them were nuns, Sister Mary Benedicta and Sister Mary Clement. And then Was this was, a Catholic school you were at? <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> and um, <laughs> they just wandered in. Paid <laughs> this! Sister Mary Benedicta was the English teacher and uh, Sister Mary Clement was the art teacher. And she hated me because I couldn't draw. And because I can't draw, I would start just playing up. And just being a, a class clown kind of thing. Uh, the English teacher, she, she wrote to my mother and said, your boy is the um, diamond pupil of this school, blah, 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 like that. The art teacher wrote on the same fucking day <laughs> to my mother saying, your son is the devil incarnate. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have got a toy or something out of that. But no. Because they arrived, she went, what's this? Two letters. And I was like, I'm, I don't know. I just don't like drawing. <laughs> You the know, devil incarnate. That's what she said, aye. That's, that's what a teacher put in your report. Yes, I would go in and I'd have to take my desk and I'd put it in front of her. And do you remember lino cutters? Uh huh. She would throw them at me. <laughs> she, oh, how, like, how bad was your colouring in? I know. Exactly. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's like, it sounds like you're making this up. Is this no, true? It's absolutely true. So she just she'd sit you in front of her yes. and throw things at you aye. and then send a letter to your mum saying that you're the uh-huh. devil incarnate. Yes. Because you couldn't draw pictures. Because I couldn't join the dots, I <laughs> fucking unbelievable. How long did you put up with that? I, I don't know. How long was I there? Oh, I was invited to leave. I remember that. <laughs> invited <laughs> to leave. Because um, I wanted to stay on in day fifth year. And um, they're like, nah, no chance. You're, you're so this was high school? 
This was high school. This is high school. Is that 15, 16 years old? But 15, 16. And then right. what did you do then when you when you were when you accepted their invitation to so leave? In, t- in tandem to that, there was th- so the drama teacher said to me, um, "This is a this is a weird t- this talk about tangential." Um, she said to me, "You need to go to the Glasgow Schools Youth Theatre, right?" And I was, I don't know what that is. And she went, "Listen, I've made you. I've got an audition for you, and you need to go." And it was in Woodside, um, just. Uh, beside the town there and I went down sorry actually I never went and um, she got a hold of me and she said I know you never went to that and I was like well it's no I'm not interested and she went I've got you another audition you need to go so I went the second time and um, so up to that point just to clarify you had no interest in drama no you had no interest in being an actor or I getting involved what I was there I was Busy stealing signs and other things. <laughs> so, so the teacher clearly sees something in you. Yeah, yeah. We, we had drama one hour a week. Right. And okay. Then one hour a week, and then it'd be music and uh-huh. then we'd alternate. Uh, but but it's not what you're thinking. It's not what you no, want to do. No, 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 not the foggiest. Yeah. Not the foggiest idea at all. And so I went to the audition and I got accepted for the Glasgow Schools Youth Theatre. And at this point, I realise that there's so many uh, girls there, and I was like, oh, hello, <laughs> right, and. <laughs> and half of the guys who are members of the company, um, they're just beginning to realise that they're gay. So my chances are getting bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> as, as, the, as the time goes on. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And so we did the various plays. What did we do? I played Jesus and God spell. Right? I know, right? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> do, do, do you remember that particular performance of yours and, and lines from it? Oh, prepare ye the way of the Lord. <laughs> there you go. That's epic. Isn't it? It's good. good. So good. How old are you? Uh, probably about 16. 16, maybe. okay. And uh-huh. then I played Curly in Oklahoma. So um, you've gone from Jesus to Curly? Yes, uh-huh. yes. And then at 17, um, I had I had left school by this point and um, I went to the Scottish Youth Theatre, of which I'm now a patron. Oh, look at you. Yeah. Get, you. Get me. And um, and we did that uh, for five weeks during the summer holidays. Oh, in fact, so I still was at school for five weeks during the summer holidays. And um, it was it's just, it was great fun. It was the best laugh. And then it, when I finished that, I remember saying, uh, when I was turning 18, I was going, I said to my mom, I said, um, I want, I'm going to try drama school, see if I can um, do this properly. What, what do you think? And she says, I, um, an Irish woman from County Mayo. She says, "Well, sure, you might as well because that's just gonna do feck all for you." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." So I got the nod. I got the green light to go to drama school, and then I went to drama school and I got in, and um, I did three years there, and then um, came out of drama school. I got re- drama school was hilarious, by the way. See, before you get to drama school, what's that? click in the head that goes this is for me what's what's that moment um, is there a moment where you go no this might be for me was it playing Jesus was it playing Curly <laughs> or what, was what? it all the girls that you got to snog at the youth uh, theatre uh, the, the latter <laughs> <laughs> very much so I, so you're going every week because you were pooling <laughs> well yes <laughs> yes yeah. and then you got to like it because yes. not only were you getting to pool you were also enjoying what you were doing yes correct yes. Okay. that's exactly right and how um, many women did you pool at this uh, well, drama I'm class I'm 53 this year so <laughs> it's an ongoing process well you're still pooling <laughs> <laughs> um, no um so I did, I, what else? I came out of there and did Scottish Youth Theatre um, and then went to drama school and then three years later I came out of drama school. I was invited to leave there as well, by the way, but I dodged that bullet. And, um, Why were you invited to leave there? Just because I was... Uh, were you a dickhead? No, no, the th- you see the thing is, right? What were you? The thing is about drama school, or my experience of it certainly, was see if... You asked a question. See if you stood up and you went, um, oh, do I don't believe you there. I don't think that's right. That was it. You were, your card was marked. And aye, they were... Well, es- if you questioned it. Mm-hmm. They were essentially bullies. Um, there was one teacher... We so had- were you never allowed to voice an opinion then? No, no, no. If you so did- they were always right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surely yeah. that's the point of education, though. Is well, learning and having opinions. Well, exactly. But, but getting a reply would be nice, but no, just... Mm. You'd Do as you're get, told. Yeah, but you'd get a letter in your pigeonhole saying you've been disciplined and all that. It was, just, it was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. But um, I got really good at table tennis and I got really good at smoking hash. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever try the two at the same time? 
That'd be quite a slow game. It was. Hey! Aye! <laughs> Bob Marley on in the background. Your shot. <laughs> the, the board just can buy you like that. Right, you ready? <laughs> Yes, the boss already behind you, bouncing around on the floor. <laughs> so you got good at table tennis, you were good at smoking hash, and you're still in the drama, and they're saying to you, eh, you can leave if you like. Maybe time to move on. Maybe time to move on. Aye, aye. Um, and then, so from there I went to the, I think, the the biggest, like, theatre, because um, nobody talks about my theatre work. Um, I went to the Archie's Theatre. Um, uh, Where's no, that? Well, it's the railway arches. The arches are, underneath. At oh, is that, oh, is that what you're talking about? Okay. The umbrella. Are, yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they had a theatre in there in one of the railway arches. Um, and I worked there on and off for, God knows, maybe, I don't know, 10 years or something. Working, doing what? Doing various plays, just in different oh, plays. Oh, right, OK, like a job and actor. Aye, aye, aye. aye. And um, there was one play we did, uh, The Caretaker by Harold Pinter, right? And uh, there was a... A club called Strawberry Fields. I don't know if you know it. It's on See, I'm an Edinburgh boy. I don't know. Let's go. Around the corner. There you go. Right. Next to Ivory Blacks. In fact, did it become it? Yeah. It's yeah. Ivory Blacks. That's right. What's Ivory Blacks? It's it just I don't a, know if it's a, a kind of. Like, was it a pub? Uh, it was around the corner. I know exactly no, where it was. It was a club, was but it was. Hub? Right, okay. Like a kind of show bar kind Quite of thing. Quite often live music or like comedians in it. Oh, okay. And then. But one, it turned into a rock bar, right? It turned into a rock club. And we were doing the. Caretaker on stage at the arches, and you could hear this thrash metal coming through from next door, right? And I was losing the rag, and I'm in full costume and all that. And I'm due to go on stage, I've got about two minutes before my cue to go on stage, and I just booted the fire exit door open, and I'm out, and I went across the lane, and I said to the two bouncers at the door, I said, get the door shut, I said, we're doing a show on here, and we don't want to hear your thrash metal. And the two of them grabbed me and dragged me in and shut the door. <laughs> So now you dressed up in your costume. Yeah. What costume a, was it? It was just like an old overcoat kind of thing. I was, right. um, and uh, and um, it'd been funnier if you were Jesus in that one. Oh, <laughs> I, as a, as a Piro doll, that's what I was. That's how Jesus appeared. And um, and I was like, what, what, I need to move. I've got a minute and a half to go on stage. Oh my goodness! And um, and the guy was going. He was wanting to leather me, and I was just like, no, no, it's everything's fine. Everything's fine. I just wanted you to keep the noise down. And they they gave me a. a a ticking off, let's say, and then um, they reopened the fire exit doors and they threw me out and they had landed like Bart Simpson on my arse like that. And I was sitting in a puddle like that, Jesus. So I climb up and I get myself up and I go straight, literally straight on stage. And Andrew Dumeyer, God rest his soul, he was there and he's looking at me. And you do this thing as actors where you're delivering your lines, but you know there's something up. Mm-hmm. And he's, he, we're doing the scene and he's, he's basically he's looking at me and he's gone, Fuck's the matter with you? <laughs> and I'm and I'm going. I'll, I'll tell you later. <laughs> but you getting your lines out. Aye, at the same but then, but then, but then yeah. the whole scene at the same time. I <laughs> so it was an eventful time at the Arches. We did one time as well. <laughs> wet, wet, wet came in at the Arches. Aye, and they were rehearsing for a world <clears throat> tour. Um, and would that have been around in 1994-95 aye because that's when they went on their world tour because I, I saw them in Dubai in 1996 I think they were heading to Celtic Park I can't that's, be sure yeah you're right because that was their big world tour I think it's the only big world tour they did it was off the back of Love Is All Around and all that well that's the thing because I heard that for a week solid well there you go so it was around that time yeah. so they were about to go everywhere Australia the Middle East Asia America Canada because Love Is All Around just went boom aye. and then they just took advantage of it so yeah, that would that would be about ninety four, ninety five. So they hired the Archies basically, right. um, and they built the whole stage, and they basically rehearsed there for I don't know, maybe a fortnight or something like that. Were you were you in watching that? No, we were in working. We were rehearsing the plays mm. um, about four Archies down. Right, yeah, okay. Um, See, so, I love Wet Wet Wet. They're one of my favourite bands in the world. But I, hearing love of us all around for an entire week. But the, but the but, thing the thing is, Cat, he wasn't even there. It was, Marty. Aye, it was all like a backing track or something. And I don't know whether... So it was maybe just oh, the band maybe putting the band, down... Yeah, maybe, maybe they're I think they were aye, laying it down. Or something aye, like okay. that. But I mean, he did come in, obviously, yeah. eventually in the whole band and we could hear them. That was fine because we were only rehearsing during the day. You so. didn't chap there, don't tell him to keep it down. No. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> so well, that, yeah, you're right. That's that's definitely mid 1990s, right. and you're still at the arches at that point. Yes, I was still at the so arches. So, did you then. mostly do theatre then before you got into TV? television? Pre- pretty much, I pretty much. Were you, um, doing, were you on the panel scene and all that at that time? Oh God, I, I, I've done all. That. Did you do them all? I. Who did I, you work with? Did you work with some of the legends of the the, well, the, the panel scene at that time? We did. Um, where did I? St- I can't remember. Probably Musselburgh <laughs> at the Brunton. Um, we did Musselburgh and then from there uh, eventually I ended up at the Kings um, with Elaine and myself and Coxie we we were like the brokers men uh-huh. the dafties um, so we did that um, and I think I did it for I don't know two two or three years maybe um, Do you like Panto? I, I do enjoy it but no being in it it's a, it's a surf act right as I'm sure you both know right mm-hmm. it's a long old trek and when you do 80 odd shows in six weeks or whatever, yeah. you do get cabin fever. Do you know what I mean? You're, Aye. you're just like, oh, I did a run once that had 96. Holy. 96. It went on God. to the 20, 25th, I think it was, of January. Oh my and we'd God. started in November. It's, so, it's just, it's just, it's pretty intense. I, I actually, I, I loved it. Aye. I loved it. But yeah, it is. It's like it, it feels like you don't see anyone else in the world. That becomes no, exactly. your, that becomes Especially your world. When you're, doing yeah. th- when you're doing three shows a day. Yeah. It becomes your family, becomes your, it becomes everything. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. But your, your entire motivation is not to swear because you go drink. I mean, they don't swear. <laughs> Do you know aye. what I mean? In front of all the all kiddies. All kids. Aye, aye. Um, so and I, I did enjoy it, uh, but more for the, the banter. Between I think you enjoyed backstage more than you enjoyed you front stage. You front shows, stage. You mean? I, I see just the cast that we had. There was Stephen Purden, there was Grado, there was Cat. Um, um, who else was there on that show? Liam oh, Dolan. Liam Dolan as well. Yeah. I mean, it was just a brilliant cast, and and we'd go out into Glasgow, have a couple of drinks between shows, which obviously wasn't no, allowed. No, we, me and Grado did. Speaking of. Um, <laughs> I was probably a fairy. So, so so Grado and I, we were we were doing the panel, and Cat was doing it. And Grado and I, one afternoon, thought, well, there's three hours to kill between the afternoon show and the main show at half seven at night. Let's go into uh, TGI Fridays doing Buchanan Street. Uh huh. We're going to get some tea, get some chicken wings, and that was it. Met a couple of people at the bar. Next thing you know, me and Grado are sharing a fishbowl cocktail, and then a second, then a second fishbowl cocktail arrived. And um, we thought, right, we're all right. We're quite buzzing. They're not going to find out that we've been drinking all afternoon. I have no idea how the boss at the pavilion found out that we had been drinking because he hadn't seen us, but he knew we'd been in the bar all day drinking. How? I have no idea. I don't know if that guy's got spy somewhere, but he knew and we got a proper telling off for it's having a drink. massively unprofessional. Well... <sighs> In fairness, just... you, never, you never remembered a line when you were sober, so it wouldn't have made any difference. <laughs> That's very true, actually. And do you know what? By the way, can I also say, Grady and I have said that was one of the best nights we had because we were a wee bit tipsy and we thoroughly enjoyed the show as well. Happy days. Happy days. So it was a win-win-win for us, even though we got a telling off. Um, I remember, I'm going to spool back a couple of years first. Yeah, go on. And then tell me, remind me about uh, Jane McCarry and Panto. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Yep. But um, so going back to when I was uh, like 17 or something, mm-hmm. I was actually stage crew at the pavilion. Is this I, a cranky sheer? No. no. See it before pre- you it get was Andy to, Cameron. Right. See oh. before you get to the stage crew thing. Is is, is somebody away getting you a beer? I know. I'll get one in the. I sure. I. I get. Um, I, I will get you a beer. I mean, that's oh, no, that's absolutely, fine. It, absolutely. This is normal life. It's like somebody going to the kitchen to get a drink. It's fine. So I was a follow spot operator at the pavilion, and I was also stage crew as well, and. Um, Big Willie, I don't know if you you might remember Big Willie. No, he's a lovely, lovely guy. If you post, I, I normally don't forget Big no, Willie. That's, true. <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> that's fair enough, especially when it's covered in pure alcohol, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so one night I came in. It was I, I remember it was the three degrees we're playing on a Sunday, and Sunday was my day off. When I will like, I see you? And then again. they said we need you in to do the. And I was like, okay, so I was, I was on my way in. Again, I was 15, 16, 17, something like that. And then they phoned me and said, no, we don't need you. You're a man over. And I was like, that's fine. And I went in the next day. This is absolutely true. And they went, oh, look, dead man walking. And I was like, what are you talking about? To I you? Said, uh-huh. The whole crew. And I'm going, oh, there's a dead man. And I'm like, what's, what's the story? What's the deal? And it turns out that uh, Big Willie, Fiposo, had taken my follow spot that night. Right, uh-huh. and um, what happened was he went up to do the show 
for the three degrees and he got an electric shock, right? Uh huh. But the shock he got was a DC shock, which means it doesn't. Ben, it's fine. Come on, camera, mate. It's okay. This is, ben, wave to the people. Wave, wave to everyone. Wave. Cheers, Ben. Ben, wh- wh- why are you so camera shy? No, I don't want to interrupt your story. No, no, but it's fine. I mean, we'll pick it up. Just ben. Hiding from the tax man, you and. Ben, come here. Come here, Ben. Come here. Come here. He's got a cease come here. and desist. Come here, Ben. Come here, Ben. Come on. Come on. Come run, mate. Come, come run. Come run. Come run. Just, just. Just so people know who it was that went and got the beer. This is Ben who works at the podcast. So Hi, ben. This ben. is Ben who got me one fucking beer. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're rationed. <laughs> I mean, there's a French fool out there. He's only brought you the one. I Unbelievable. I think it's a Coors Light as well. <laughs> so um, anyway, carry on. So he's, he's had a shock. He's what? got an electric, an electric shock, but a DC shock means it doesn't repel you. What does it do? It means you stick to it. You can't let it go. How? Because that's what a DC shock does. What's the difference? I, I wasn't in school that fucking long. <laughs> <laughs> so I always thought an electric shock was boom. Correct. But this isn't a, a boom. A DC shock, you can't let it go. Yeah, you but you, go you know the name of it, but you don't know why. No. Well, right. Is, right. Is there somebody here that could Google that, please? Hold on. Just hold on. Before yeah. I need to know what the difference is. What's the difference between a DC shock and what's the other shock? An AC shock. An AC shock. Okay. AC, so, DC. Yeah. DC. Yeah. All right, go DC. on, say. DC is most likely to cause a single convulsive contraction which often forces the victim away from the current source. Right, so that's a DC. DC. So the DC one is it forces you away from the current source. So the AC must be the one that you stick to. An AC's alternating nature has a greater tendency to throw the heart's pacemaker neurons into a condition of fibrillation, whereas DC tends to just make the heart stand still. Oh, right, okay, well, you're right. You just get the beers. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, Anyway. imagine. So, aye, he's still stuck to this, So he's stuck to it, is he shaking? Yes, and... and um, Is it like the movies, the smoke comes out his hair well, and all he's that? Got, he's got two choices, you see, right? Uh-huh. Um, he, f- he falls into the audience with it, and that way it, it gets unplugged, and then he's Takes fine. out the audience. So he, yeah, mm-hmm. it, it happens, and, it, and, and he's fallen maybe about 70, 80 feet. Not oh, good. Before he hits some right, of so the what's, audience. what's the other option? And so he pulls it onto himself. Oh, pulls it onto himself? Yep. And then he passes it, and the ambulance came, and they stuck the tube down his throat and saved his life. So he was okay? You know, he's, right. he's, he's uh, absolutely fine, I but... I got a wee bit of a panic on there. I thought, oh, my go, God, right. he's killed himself to save the audience. There you go, and, and that's exactly what happened. But it, the the crew, ambulance crew, said if it had been somebody, somebody smaller than him, because he's a big, big lad... Gone. No chance. Gone. So when... That you, could have been you. It could have been Do you take that as a kind of moment... Uh, or like a like Pulp Fiction moment with ah it? yes oh, yes aye. Aye. sort of it could have been aye. Yeah. I, I mean I was like because you would have done that oh but that, pro, I, that, would have, that was my job job aye so right. you'd have done so that could have been you and because you were probably I'm guessing smaller than him yeah that would have probably killed you toast aye. Gone. Gone. There you go, aye. And you're, we're, not, we're not talking today. Exactly. And Gavin, Gavin, and Gavin Mitchell would have been playing Winston. <laughs> <laughs> Gutted. <laughs> Gutted from beyond the grave. <laughs> well, that's some story, that. I Again, that, that's, that is like that Pulp Fiction moment where you've got Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta stood there and the guy comes running out the room with a gun, fires it, aye. and all the bullets fire behind him and hit the wall. That's what that is. I remember, uh, I watched it the other night. It was on so the, did I? Aye, yes. there you go, at New Year. Yeah. And uh, I just kind of tuned into it at that point mm-hmm. and that there's the boy I completely forgot about the boy hiding in the toilet in the toilet yeah and they just waste him and all and he's listening to everything that's going on Aye. and he opens up the door with a big gun and just starts shooting at them Aye. it's brilliant one of my favourite movies of all time I watch it all the time my mum and dad what went to see that in the I think it's his soul Ah, I think, I see, think, see, I the, think see, the, right. see the plaster on the yes. back of his neck? Yes. I think that's um, is, is covering up the hole from where his soul was taken. And I think in the, the when he opens it up, you see John Travolta's reaction when he opens up in the kitchen. Yeah. He's looking at the briefcase and then Samuel L. Jackson says, are we good? Are we good? Yeah. Are we good? And he's just like staring at it in like wonderment. 
And he's like, yeah, we're good. And he shuts the case. And you never really find out what it is. I think it's his soul because I think there's a sign in the movie where there's a plaster on the back of his neck. No, they asked Tarantino what was in it and he said... Uh, a, oh, did, a, he, did he answer it? No, he said a battery and a light bulb. <laughs> a battery, oh yeah, <laughs> to give them that glow. Yes. <laughs> but yes, an amazing movie. Sorry, Kat, go on. Yeah. I, I don't know, I was saying my mum and dad went to see that at the pictures at Clyde Bank. Your mum and dad went to Pulp Fiction? Yeah, because they, they would just go for a day out and to keep warm. So quite often they didn't, they didn't know what they were, they were going to see. But honestly, my dad was the only person that knew that you're not allowed to stay in any film for 20 minutes before you, they don't pay you your money back. So you would go to the cinema every single week and watch the first 19 minutes of a film. If you didn't like it, we'd go out, get his money back and leave. But the, the Pulp Fiction one, I remember him coming out and I've not actually seen Pulp Fiction. Do they splat everyone at the end? Yes. Right. Yeah. He said, well, they were in this cinema in Clyde Bank. There was literally six people in the cinema, just a couple of wee women, my mum and dad. And at the end of it, there's a lot of shooting, there's blood it's in the everyone. head. And apparently this wee woman, a wee granny stood up and she went, son, could you not have done that at the fucking start and see me for you? <laughs> <laughs> and that was his lasting memory of Pulp Fiction. So. Such a good movie, love that. It's so, a brilliant movie. So um, we, 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 we interrupted your... Uh, trajectory through your life. Oh, yes. yes, so we're at, we've done theatre. We've we're got at Jane McCarry now. So we're at Jane, Jane with this is at the, at the panto. When we did the panto. So Jane was doing panto with you at the Kings. Me, Jane and Mark and Elaine C and various others and, mm-hmm. you know, the usual. And then um, Jane was, she's a terrible corpse or she laughs. Or she does. She's yeah. so she's, giggly though, isn't she? This really is bad. Isaac's still game in case you're not working oh, yes, out who Jane yes. McCarry is. And then um, uh, there was one time I was, I went down to her dressing room, I can't remember what, and I went in and she was crying, right? Like proper crying. What, well, upset and, crying? Uh huh. And I was like, what's up with you? And she went, she went, I can't stop laughing on stage. I don't know what I'm going to do. She was greeting because she was laughing. I said, I'm fucking off. I'm away. Fucking lunatic. That's mad that you've all worked together for so long then. Huh? Before Still Game comes so, on the scene. Was Ch- Chewing the Fat yeah. would have been before Still Game? Would that be right? Chewing the Fat was first, I. In right. fact, well, uh, the chronology is... Do you like that? Chronology? I do. Yeah, take um, us to how you get into uh, television in the first place then, well, please. Well, what happened what was... So you're doing theatre, you're doing panto, that's so, all going great, and then you get your first TV break. No, um, what happened was the, the still doing the theatre, and then I did, uh, way after I left drama school, no, and a profit share tour of the Highlands with Greg Hempel. And, a um, what share? A profit share tour. What's that? Well... Uh, <laughs> It made, it's, it's where actors don't make very much money. You don't earn a curdy, right? <laughs> and um, so we did this profit share tour of the Highlands, which is a really bad idea because there's nobody up there, right? And there was one night, this made it into still game. There was one night I made a fiver. Um, that was my wages. And and she said to me, but you owe the company four pounds. And she gave me a quid, <laughs> a pound. And, I, and Greg says, what are you going to do with that fella? I said, I'm going to put it in that fucking puggy. <laughs> So I put it in the puggy and I never even got a hold. It just went round four times. That was it. That was it, gone. That was it. Done. And that made it into still game. That made it into still game. So um, why, why were you doing that? Is that? Was that the only way to make money? Aye, aye. Absolutely it was. And how um, long did you two do that for? Oh, we did it, I don't know, the tour maybe a, a, a month or so. Maybe. So how did, how did you meet Greg then? That's where I met him. I met him on that. You met him on that? Yes. And then Greg said to me, um, about probably about six months later, he said, come to this, come to Ford's house. Um, we want you to have a look at this thing that we've written. And what year would this have been? Late 90s? Uh, 90, probably 97. 97. Like so Greg is clearly aware of the idea for well, chewing the fat. They'd, no, be- no. no, because they'd written Still Game, the stage play, the original one. Before Chewing the Fat? Yes. So that came first? Well, Chewing the Fat was on the radio, I think I'm right in saying, but the the theatre show that was just the three of us. Yeah, yeah. So that went to the Edinburgh Festival, um, and we performed that at the Edinburgh Festival to 15 people at one point. And then when you spool forward to the hydro, it's... Ah, it's unreal. I know. Miriam Margolis came, and she fell asleep in the front row. (laughs) 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 She fell asleep snoring away. Thanks for listening and watching the podcast. We'll be back with the show in just a second, but it's now time to play a little game with our friends from G4 Claims. 
Hi and welcome to G4 Play with G4 Claims. It's a fun game and Yoon, what's the score? It's 2-2, two, two, Kat. Okay, and who are you playing today? Today from G4 Claims, I'm playing against Ben. Hello there, Ben. Hi, Yoon, how are you? Not bad. What do you do, Ben? I am the studio assistant of You're the s- podcast. Oh, studios. right, studio assistant, because last week we, we played against your boss. Yes. And, and he won. He did. So it's 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Here we go. You, your buzzer noise, Ben, is? Ding. And yours, you in? Well, everybody wants to be a dong. <laughs> you know how it works, Ben. You need to say your buzzer word and I'll describe something. Here we go. The dream end to a night out. Sorry? The dream end to a night out. Dong. <laughs> yep. Is that your answer? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, chips. Oh, close. It's oh, like, don't be like saying that. Don't. Close. Ah. Uh, you eat it. Ah. Ding. Ah. Ben. A kebab. Ah. Two ingredients that both begin with the same letter. Two ingredients that begin with the same letter? Oh, wait, wait. Uh, uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, wait, wait. Two um, ingredients begin with the same letter. Ding. Oh, oh. Pepperoni pizza. Oh, good one, but no. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Go. Oh, wait, 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 dong, dong, dong. Ian. Smoked sausage. No. Oh, oh, is that a good one as well? Potato and protein. Potato and protein. Potato and protein. <laughs> Have you got that? I don't say it. Huh? Uh, potato and protein. <laughs> Potato and protein no, At the end of a night oh, 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 ding Ding, ben. chicken and chips No Oh, oh my god you say? Chicken and chips Oh, I did uh, Dong yeah. Dong, dong, dong uh, Curry sauce and chips no. oh, oh, chi- oh, oh, ding, man. ding Chips and cheese Yes, yes. Oh, No <laughs> We did the rounds We did the rounds We went, we went through the whole menu The whole menu Chicken and chips Chips and chips Chips and chips KFC when you come in Oh, absolutely. Aye, aye. Oh, you can't <laughs> money, Ben. Chicken and chips. <laughs> like you can afford a chicken supper at a night out. Anyway, um, so the score we, now. By the way, by the way, can I just say we went round an entire munchie box. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> The score now is 3 2 to G4 Claims. Oh, a nightmare. And the answer was chips and cheese. Thanks for playing. So Greg says so you come round to Ford's house, is that when you read a script Greg's for come. Still Game? That was the first time I met Ford, it was in his living room and we read the script um, and they said right away, they said, right, do you want to come to the festival? I said, I'm sure I'm going to do that. And what part were you reading? Winston. You were Winston um, from the start. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And um, so we did We did the festival, but halfway through the festival, um, they got the nod for chewing the fat to go on TV. Um, ah, okay. And so we all went out and had that celebration because they said we want you in it as well. So they'd already submitted that to the BBC, the idea, before well, the Still Game stage show? It, when we were doing the stage show, Tune the Fats on the radio, right. and then the um, execs have heard it and says, right, we could put this on the telly, and that's how that, that came about. And right. probably about, I don't know, eight months, ten months later, because obviously they had to write it. And film it and everything, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, came on, it came on the telly. You forget how much a part of your life that has been because that's like what 20 odd years it's more than that easily 30 years aye, aye. Yeah. it's mental aye. Absolutely are you mental. Pa- is Winston part of you now are you part of Winston are well you- I, I, I mean it's never Sanjeev Kohli puts it better than anybody I think it's never going to go away yeah in the nicest possible way so though. you have to embrace it aye mm-hmm. do you know what I mean I, and you know it, and you, punters love it all you get but yeah. that's the thing all you get all you get is goodwill you were both there that night yeah. in the yeah. Glasgow yeah that's all you get, you know? And and I always say I could have been in something shite. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. And that's been remembered true. for the wrong reasons. Like Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love Tiger. I need to tell you a funny story, right? Well, were, you, um, were, you, were you ever a dead body in Tiger? Because it would appear as though everybody's been a dead body in Tiger. You know what I was? I was a um, student in Garage. I never even had a name. <laughs> I had three lines. You were student in garage. Student and in do garage. you remember your three lines? It was something like um, <laughs> it, it, it was um, the the two cops come in, James and Blythe, and I, I said, "Who wants to know?" <laughs> like and then they said, and then the guy who they were looking for had already jumped to the fence and got away. So I was I protected them. Were you a one take wonder? Did you remember your line? Aye, Gets. exactly. Gets. And how long did you worry about that line before you appeared on set? About twelve hours. Forever. <laughs> 
<laughs> What's the weirdest part you've ever played then? The one that you'll look back on and go, what was that all about? Well, I did take the high road and... Um, you did, did you? Well, I, not I, the dream sequence one, no. Oh, no, I thought, no. Was there not one crazy episode that they... It was like Mrs. Mac's dream or something. No, really? Have I, I, I know. Mrs. Have I made, Mac had a dream. Have I made this up? I don't no, know. I'm pretty sure. It's there like was a Bobby a... Ewing moment yeah, from Dallas. Yeah, I'm I made sure. this about Mrs. I'm, Mac. I'm sure, there was a. Uh, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan take of the Take the High Road. I'm not really aware of it. I remember my granny watching apparently, it. Apparently, right? Mm-hmm. Apparently, the only reason they kept it on the air was because the Queen Mother loved it, and that's why they. And then the second she snuffed it, they just went right, pull it. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> so. So take the high road the ended because the Queen Mum died. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> Have you got any evidence of this? No. Is this no, is, is this is this one of those urban myths I've just grown arms and legs she over said the years? She said desist. Right. Yeah. Right. So so you're telling me that the Queen Mother mm-hmm. loved take the high road. I think that's true. Okay, that might well be true. Yep. Are you also believing the only reason they kept it going for all that time was because the Queen Mother loved it? It's an interesting theory. It's, aye, it's entirely Do possible. you believe it? Well, I don't know the woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she's up to. <laughs> but you believe she loved it. You believe that she loved yes. it. I, I'm uh-huh. going with that. All right. so and you area, think you... I mean, this is not the area 54. <laughs> Just, you know. Who kicked the bucket to end still game then? Uh, um, who did? That's a good... Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> who loves... Here, here's a story. It, 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 was, it was Prince. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Prince, Prince was... When Prince went, that was end of still game. What was it? Um, so, what were, um, <laughs> so I did their Queen Mum, Prince. I know, but it wasn't funny. Oh, I get All it. Right. I get it. <laughs> T- I, mean, I, mean, I mean, come on, no. come on, I thought that was really good. We all got it, but it was shit. It wasn't shit. <laughs> I thought it was, don't look at your audience. <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing out of sympathy, you pricks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really good, Queen, Prince, Prince, Queen. But no, no I, do you know what? I actually think you didn't get it. You didn't <laughs> hear it, right? That's true. No, I don't think you did. I I'm don't, no fucking I, listening. Right, right? I don't think either of you <laughs> got what I did there. Well, you mentioned the Queen Mum right. loving Take uh-huh. the High Road and me going, well, still game ended after Prince died. Prince and Queen Prince King. Andrew. No. Oh, no, we're, no, no, we're not talking. No, no. He's alive, though. Oh, is he? I'm talking about, the, I'm talking about, I'm talking about <laughs> Prince, the singer, who died in his home in Minneapolis. You and we, we do get that. No, you did. I don't think you did. And now, now, no. and now because you look fucking stupid, you're now all saying, Hang oh, we did second. get it and we did hear it. We just ignored it. No, you didn't they? I think it's because I brought it up that I was told a wee joke there that you have to pretend that I'm an idiot. You, regardless, you still remain a sexy motherfucker. It's <laughs> a good song, that. There you go. I used to play the nightclubs when I was a DJ there in Dubai. Anyway, they laughed. Look at them, four of them were all laughing there. Yeah. Brilliant. They applause. You. Okay, so, so anyway. So, so one day, going to I, was, I was coming home. Uh, to my house, I lived in Glasgow Green in that area there, and I was walking back, and there was a film unit there, and um, it turned out it was Taggart, which takes us back to the Taggart thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I said, Go and say hello. So I go up, and Colin McCready's there, um, and Alex Norton, and they're done up in their cop outfits and all that, and just chatting away five minutes, ten minutes, then back up the road, made my tea, thought nothing more of it. Next day, <laughs> Colin McCready phones me up, shouting at me, You! He went, you, you put a framed fanny in my costume. <laughs> a a framed, framed fanny? A framed fanny, right? <laughs> I know, cat, I know. And I was like, Colin, what are you talking about? A framed fanny? Aye, did somebody cut a fanny, fanny out of a nude book, right? Right, and put and it on his costume. It was about a size of an after eight mint. <laughs> and they put it in a frame. <laughs> and somebody had planted it on him and he said it was me. <laughs> I know. Do you actually mean a framed fa- I, I An thought, actual I framed thought it was fanny. A, a thing that I hadn't wait, wait heard of. This goes right, and I was like, Colin, I have no idea where like this Colin is going. So like a proper picture frame. Aye, and right. it's a fanny. Fanny cut out a nude book. <laughs> <laughs> it's put inside. Okay. Put in a frame uh-huh. And then put in his detective's costume. 
and the, he was like, it was definitely you. And I went, Colin, it wasn't me. And by the way, it wasn't me. It was the camera. It wasn't me. So, um, so there's still my mystery surrounding this. Well, I met him last year um, at Pit Lockery. He went, remember that time you put the frame fan? I said, Colin, it wasn't me. <laughs> and you know how? Do you know how you get to... Um, <laughs> so you he still thinks it's you. Well, wait, it gets worse. All right. right. So, you know how those, you get those moments where you're sitting and you're thinking to yourself, you might as well get hung for a sheep as a lamb, right? <laughs> and What did you do? I went on Amazon and I ordered six tiny wee frames. It's like <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that's the fuck it. And then, if he that, believes that. That was phase one, right? Then I went, oh, sh-. the next day I woke up and I was like, I need to go and buy a nude book now. <laughs> And so I went down to Dumbarton Road and I uh, found the convenience store there in Dumbarton Road <laughs> and I went in to buy um, this nude book. I didn't even know if they still existed. <laughs> Top right? shelf. Aye. Aye. And it, it, was, it was that old, this nude book, right? Uh-huh. It came with a free DVD. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I took the nude book off the shelf and I went up and I placed it on, on the counter. And Did the you one. have a, a paper wrapped around it? No. No? no. I just went up and... and, yep. and, I, and it's wrapped in cellophane now as well, yeah. the magazines, yeah. Oh, well, so, you know... Didn't you, you and um, but I, she looked up at me right, and she she did kind of double take like that, and she's clearly thinking that's Winston that's from Winston still, game. Is still game. He clearly buying, is still game buying buying a notebook. I mean, and but her face is gone. You can see she's gone. Sh- surely he's got broadband. <laughs> Honestly, so, what, what, what a night I had. I was sitting in the hood. Me in the dark. Like, oh, this one, puffy. Oh, look at this one, hairless. And then put them all. Put them in individual frames. In individual and what have you done with them? Jane McCarry, Mark Cox. <laughs> Every one of them. Just send them out, there you go, yeah. There you go. Right in your jacket. You know, but to this day. Uh huh. I want an honest, it was not you that put that in Colin McCready's Colin, pocket. Colin, if you're watching, it was not me. So there it is was still... A, I'm telling the brrrm truth. Made that noise up. Yeah, yeah, from um, so, um, Would I Lie to you. you. So who do you think it was? Probably Alex Norton. <laughs> you think it's Norton? <laughs> you think it's Alex Norton who's framing fannies and putting them in the pockets of his co-stars? Yeah. Right. We should yeah. maybe ask Grado, because he works with them on... Two doors oh, down. that's a great shout. Oh, aye, that's So true. if there's any pictures of tiny little... Fannies coming uh-huh. <laughs> In the cast of Two Doors, two down, doors down, then m- it is Alex m- Norton. Maybe he has an issue. Maybe aye. he has a problem. I don't know. I mean, I, did I have, to have I got Alex Norton's number? Because I could ask him now. <laughs> I dare you to phone him right now with that Hold question. On. I think I might have his number. And the opening line is, Paul Riley says... <laughs> well, it's true, though. Alex Norton, Alex Norton. <laughs> He'll, he'll oh, at no, least, I've no good number. I he'll at least number. confirm the story, though. When next, oh, oh, no, no, no. no. I'm going to ask Gredo to ask him for me, because Aye. that's a brilliant story. We need to know that. We need to know. I know, I know. But why would somebody do that? Try, try and think of the the thought process of that. Why would you go out the well, way to no, buy a picture why, frame why and then come... Why would an like me go and do the same thing? <laughs> well, I was going to get to that, but to begin with, what gave you the idea is that something happened on the set of Taggart that you got the blame for. And I wasn't but, even and, employed and, on. And, no, and but you got the blame for it. So who was it and what was the mindset around it that you're sitting, you're sitting in your bed one night Just you're going... fun, isn't it? Maybe it's because Colin's a fanny. <laughs> 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 Possible. Yes. And so instead of telling him directly to his face, you put a wee a wee frame in his picture. That's what I reckon. That's my theory. So if you think somebody is one, you give them a picture of it. No, any mayor. I'm, I'm, I'm no, past that. Right? Yeah, you're past that. Now, right? the jail. <laughs> who was the biggest trickster then in Still Game? Then who did all that kind of stuff? Who I was... get to blame it quite a lot, mm-hmm. but um, um, I don't know. Maybe the. the you know how, because the, the days are so long, you do whatever you have to do to get through the day, really. Yeah. Um, and Coxie, um, Coxie's, um, he, he bought a, did I tell you this? He bought a wee red car, a wee, like, I think it was a Fiat or something. I don't know anything about cars. Anyway, he bought this red car and um, 
it was his pride and joy kind of thing. And we were rehearsing panto, I remember that, at the time. And we were in a council venue, Woodside Halls or something, and there was a thing on the, the door, and it just said, breastfeeding welcome, like a plastic thing, <laughs> like a tax disc, uh-huh. almost. And I just took that whole hello, and I took it away, and I put it in the back of Coxie's motor, in the back the back windscreen, and uh, it stayed, stayed there for three months. <laughs> Never noticed. No, and I got a text message one night. It just said, "You're a child." I knew, I knew exactly what he was talking about. And then we were then we, we got on to day still game, and I was finished one day. I got an early bath, and I was going to the, get my wig off and stuff. And the guy who runs all the facilities vehicles, he said, "Oh, you played a blind of the day. This is in Mary Hill when we were on location." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" And he went, Coxie's motor. I said, I've got no idea what you're talking about. Again, this is the frame fanny scenario. Um, And I went, what? He went, look at the back of Coxie's motor. And it was right across from an MOT garage where he'd parked his car. And the guys in the MOT garage had made a number plate um, for the back of the car and stuck it on Coxie's motor. And it just said, (laughs) Bobag. Right? And I was like, oh my God, this is the best day of my life, right? The best day of my life. This is all absolutely true, by the way. I said, Cox, are you going to give me a lift into the tune? Would that be all right? He went, aye, aye, no bother. And I phoned my wife at the time. I said, Yvonne, you need to get out, see this. And then I got out, cheers, thanks very much. And he, he was going out, driving out to Paisley. And I went, look at the back, look at the back. And she went, oh my God, that's too funny. That's the best. And the polis pulled him out and I said, have you, have you seen the back of your car? He went, oh, for fuck. And I had to believe in that as well. Yeah, yeah. It and it wasn't your idea. You didn't see the guys in the nothing MOT place. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. nothing to do with me. Here's what. However, I did have something involved. In. Uh-huh. Um, he said to me one day, we were in my house and we were working, and he said, "Can I leave my car at your house tonight?" And I was like, "Ah, it's fine. That's no problem." And my car's on a kind of incline there, the, the 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 street that I was living in at the time. And then Ford Keenan, about an hour later, Ford Keenan's wife calls me up, and she said, "Does Coxie have a wee red like wanker mobile?" <laughs> and I went, "Aye." And she said, "Well, you need to come out because it's just like smashed into the railings of the local park." Across, so I went out, and it, sure enough, it rolled down the hill, crossed the street, mounted the pavement, and smashed into the railings of the, the local park there, right? And I was like, oh shit, I, bit, I got my phone out, and my neighbour, um, he's walking down the street with his dog, and his wee son, his wee boy, and he said, what's, what's going on here? Now, this man, I'm sh- shit, you know, I'm not making that up. This man was a like a church elder or something, like a man of God, and he's an American. So if you think Ned Flanders, basically, <laughs> that's that's <laughs> right, what okay, about, right? right, okay. And he said, "What's going on here?" And I went, "I don't really know." I said, "Cox, his cars just rolled in the street. I think maybe his handbrake or something. I don't know anything about cars." And I said, "I'm just going to phone him just now." And the cars in the in the railings, and this man of God says, "Well, see before you phone him." Why don't we put my eight-year-old son under the back wheel? <laughs> and make it look like he's dead. This and is was, the church man. Yes. <laughs> Ned <laughs> Flanders. <laughs> Absolutely true. And I, I was just like, want to send him a photo. I had a camera straight away. I was like, yes, this is, is the best thing of my life. the eight-year-old son oblige? Aye. Happily, we Harrison. And you were like, well up for it. Oh. So oh. we Harrison was like, yeah, I'll do that. Aye. He's so he in, I, 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 They must be in the cloud somewhere. I've still got the photos, man. So he's lying down, kidding on his deed. And I've sent, sent the photo to Coxie. I says, you better get around here. The police want to talk to you and that wee boy's in the ambulance. <laughs> Is that bad? That's 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 terrible. <laughs> I mean, she at least got some ketchup out. For I know. <laughs> I'd run back across to my house. <laughs> oh my goodness! That is so good. He, he must have been, been in a panic, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, blind panic. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> you must have had so many laughs though from your time, like um, you know, hanging about still game. But even at the hydro, did you share dressing rooms with people or? No, I had, a, uh, I had a dressing room of my own because mm-hmm. I don't like Andy. No, um, <laughs> uh, no, we were all, I think, pretty much we were all in our own dressing rooms. I think Gavin and Sanji have shared, but we were always in and out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We were always just... Was was there not a, a story that I heard about Still Game, a bit like what happened with train spotting? that Ewan Bremner, who was always renting, but when it came to the actual movie, they changed him to play Spud... 
and then Ewan McGregor was brought in to play the part of Renton. Was there not something similar with Still Game that <coughs> somebody had the role, but then it changed to somebody else? Oh, it was... Um, was Mark not... It was Bobby the barman. Aye. It was... Um, was it oh, Bobby? Aye, aye. Was, 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 was um, Gav meant to be somebody else? It was... Um, the what was the story again? There was somebody who was playing a part, and then... It was the guys in River City, or oh, come back to me, Hibs fan. <laughs> That's how I can... Oh, Grant Stott? No, no, no. Um, Billy McElhaney. He was in the, I think it was the pilot episode, he played Bobby the Barman. Oh, the did he? Oh, that's yeah. maybe what it is, yes. Yeah, I think that's, that's, yeah. I think that's what you're thinking about. Right. So so why did that no work out? I don't know. I, I, I no really, idea? No. And then was it Bobby came in for the actual series? Yeah. Aye. Well, what happened was... The, Bobby's the, the character. Uh, Bobby, sorry, uh, Gavin came in for the actual the, series. Um, the, the pilot episode we filmed and the BBC um, said, right, okay, we're going to take this to a series. And so between the pilot and the second episode that you see, yeah, th- there was a whole year went by because they had to write it again. Um, <clears throat> so they'd only written the pilot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the the pilot and then the, the next five are a year apart. And the cast that are in the pilot, apart from Bobby McElhaney, stayed the same. There was no other changes, was there? No, as far as I'm aware. It was I all stayed the same. same. Right, right. And how many series was that again? Seven? Of the first run. I think. First run was six, wasn't it? I think it was six. Six yeah. series. And then there was a gap, and then we did... Th- oh, you did the one where you came back off the back of the hydro. We did three more after that, I think. No, there wasn't three, was there? there was, you I, think I, there was I, nine series? Well, I know there was 62 episodes in total. Go and Google that. How many Sunday. series of still game was? I thought there was oh, eight. I, I thought it was five. Five at the beginning? The what, five, then the hydro? Yeah, and then off the back of the hydro, a series. Nine. 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 Was there it nine go. seasons? I can't think of the nine seasons. Mm. Was there really? So, so there would have been six in to begin Can with. Kelly researches this yeah. well. I always thought there was eight. I don't know where the ninth one is then. Or is it? Not in your DVD collection. No, clearly not. They go up a mountain in the episode. That the I've last seen that episode. one. I've seen that one, yes. Yeah, so you've seen them all. Will, the, will it ever come back? Will there be any way back? I don't know. Um, to be honest with you, it's no... Um, I get asked that quite a lot, but it's kind of not my question to answer because... I mean, you, you would say I anyway if they were to bring it back. There's no doubt about aye, it. Aye, um, it's a great character. And do you know what you find that... And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think for most people, their favourite character is Winston. Aye. I think for generally most people... I mean, it's a great ensemble cast, don't you know? And a lot of people love Isa as well. But there's something about Winston that people can relate to. Well, that is, yeah, that's exactly the word. It's relatable. And everybody knows an angry... Uncle, uncle or, or, or whatever. Yeah, you know like what I mean? that. Yeah. Who speaks the way they speak and gets angry at the weirdest thing. Yeah. Exactly. What are the what are the most famous quotes people shout back at you and then? Um, well, I th- your tadger. Oh God, I get that all the time. Yeah. Um, and that I mean, but I think it's it's a weird thing because people always remember the thing with the leg going out the windy, um, <laughs> and how we you know. Um, how we went about filming that because, you know, the leg goes at the windy, fine. Two weeks later, we're a doing the uh, external shot of me looking at the windy with Ford and Greg. Um, and so that's, you know, I tell that story sometimes in, in my show. Yeah. Um, just so people, if they're interested, about, uh, you know, tell it's it was such a famous scene as well anyway. That people uh, like to know how it worked and how you did yeah, it, yeah. But I think, you, you know, do you mark your diet to you get my tits? That's that's yeah. another one that I yeah. get quite a lot as well. Um, Your interactions with uh, the bookie, there's a lot of famous yes, lines in that and yes. how you two interact with each other. So but there's quite a few in there. That's like, um, you know, for example, on, on the page, it just says Stevie, 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 right? And I'm going, right, okay, I'm going make this funny somehow. And it's so then you end up with Stevie, <laughs> Stevie, <laughs> Stevie, like that. Yes. And then that's, you know, so th- there's, it's just the way that you, it's like, you kind of, there's, there's so, a wee step, a wee bounce, and you get up to so the window. There's so many of them, there's so many of them examples. And I'm not talking about just myself, I'm talking about the entire cast, where something's on the page and you're like, right, okay, I'm going to date like that. And are you allowed to interpret in any way that you think yeah, works for you. Absolutely. I think after Chewing the Fat was up and running, which we did f- four seasons of, I can't even remember, Ford and Greg just stopped watching the rushes. They were just like, we know what you're doing. Everybody knows their job. And so oh, that, wow. That was fine. And then when we came to Still Game, 
if you, if you spool back, I'd already done the play, and they went, well, we know what Paul's is doing. Yeah. And then, uh, and then everybody else, or they all checked in, they all checked all the boxes as well. And so that's how that's how it went. And we just ran a kind of happy ship, as it were. You know I, I mean, mean? We, we've been out and about with you guys yes. loads. We've done these shows mm. where you meet the audience and stuff like that. And it's just crazy, the oh. level of affection that Scottish people Absolutely. have for the show, for yeah. the characters, and also for you guys as individuals, Aye. which oh, no, is just lovely. It is not. It's a mm. huge compliment. It really is. And then, see, when you go to places like Australia or um, the, the, I think my my favourite is Bermuda. <laughs> Have you done a show in Bermuda? No. A guy no. comes up to me in Bermuda and he says, Aye. are you are you Winston? If still okay. <laughs> I was like, Aye. <laughs> Bermuda? Anyway. Aye, Bermuda. Was he a Scottish guy in Bermuda? Or he, said, well, he said, I run the, um, I'm the captain of the golf club or whatever. He, he ran the golf club. He yeah. said, you, you want to play golf? I said, no, I've got a slip disc. Uh, which she is, said, I've got one leg. And, uh, I, said, <laughs> I said, you want a framed fanny? And he said, no, no, no. <laughs> Do you know what I found really lovely that night in Glasgow at the Hilton uh-huh. when you did that live show, that Q&A? It was such a brilliant night and there was so much love in the room for you, so much yes. affection for all of you. That afterwards, what I found with a lot of these things that I've done in the past is that the, the stars, i.e. yourselves, would get off stage and then you would just disappear. Yeah, you never didn't. seen again. No, you didn't. No. You interacted with the audience. Yeah. You were getting pictures and selfies and all sorts of things. I just thought that was an amazing moment. They'd already got what they wanted from yes. it, but then you also gave a wee bit more back by but getting off stage and then taking all these pictures with all these fans of yours. It was brilliant to see. The, the best of the lot of us um, uh, is Jane McCary because she just wants to know your story, right? What's, what's going on? What's happening? And, you She's know, a wee bit of eyes, hasn't she? Oh, 100%. <laughs> a big bit of eyes. 100%. Do you not tell Jane a, a secret then? Is that what you're telling us? Uh, no, I wouldn't be telling her nothing. We're talking, yes, about, we're, we're talking about Jane, not Isa. We're talking about Jane yes. McCary. Yes. Don't tell her hee haw. Yes. Because it. she will, as soon as you're off the phone, she'll be phoning you, go, you're not going to believe she, what you exactly. told me just now. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, no, she's in London at the minute. She sent me a text last night. She was in, what's that jazz club? What's it, Ronnie? Ronnie Scott's. There you go. Um, she was in there last night um, and she's one of my besties. I love her to bits. Should we but FaceTime her? If you want. I don't know. If I got what's the Wi Fi in here? Jane! Jane! Jane, you alright? Yes. Right, where are you? I'm just in a, I'm in a cafe. I'm in a cafe in London. Right, you're in a cafe in London. Who are you with? I'm with my friend Karen. We look like a couple of riots because we were out last night. Oh, so is that why you're not showing us your face? Yes. All right. I've got the cold. Okay. So the reason that we're calling you is because um, a pal of yours from Still Game is here being interviewed by us and he has said something which I think is slanderous and you may want to sue him if it's not true. Okay. Janie. Oh, Paul Riley. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I sent him pictures last night. I know, I know, I got them, I was just saying that. I was just saying that. Um, Jane, the, the question I, I've been asked is, are you naturally nosy as a person? And what did you answer, Paul Ryan? 100%. He, he, he said that you were um, just like Isa in real life. If if I tell you a secret, Jane, you'd be straight on the phone to Paul Riley to tell him all about it. Is that true? No. Oh, you're sticking in, but can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go on. Jane. Oh, wait, 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 if we're frozen. Right, we're, we're back, frozen. we're back now. So, Jane, if I was um, to tell you a secret, would you go straight to the phone and tell Paul what that secret is? Um, well, it's levels of loyalty, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh. So that means that you are a bit of a gossip then in real life. No, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't. Listen, I've never it. once revealed anything about Paul's um, STIs. I've never told anyone about the time he was arrested in New York. I've never oh. told Paul. I'll take that to the grave. Jane. <laughs> On my sweet Jack Russell's life. You're a true friend. Jane, Jane. 
Did I did I put a framed fanny in Collie McCready's costume? Well, you see, I'm very good friends with Colin as well. Now, according to Colin, he would swear that you did, but you would say you didn't. And see, to be honest, you in between the pair of them, I don't know. Is is Paul really capable of putting a framed fanny in somebody's pocket? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Jane, he probably is. Jane, did you not get one in your pocket? That's her own one. I did get one in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jane, I don't know what you're doing in London, but have a good one and we'll see you when you get back. We'll get you onto the podcast. It's been this week, Cafe in London. So a man came up and uh, unbelievably, I never get recognised in London, recognised her, right? But he had a badge of with Doc Cotton on his badge and he said, I said to him, and his hat, and I said, that's amazing. And he said, I would like you to have it and I'm going to show you it. Can you see it? Can you see my Doc Cotton? Yeah. Why did they give you a Doc Cotton badge? <laughs> Because I loved Dot Cotton Dot and Ethel and Willie. And, uh, the and I said to him, I love your badge. Where did you get it? And he said, I would like to give you that badge. How nice is that dog not having a badge? <laughs> Some people might find it nice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's the weirdest chat I've ever heard. I know. <laughs> Hi, are you Jane? How gorgeous is that? It's not I'm really. I'm telling you this, right? I have spoken since the minute I got on the plane and the man next to me gave me his fisherman's friend. I have spoken to every single person. Like, my voice is genuinely worse. Spoke to helped us on and off the train. All the Tottenham supporters came and sat next to us, shared a drink with us, had a blast coming into London. Everybody, we went to Ronnie Scott's. We spoke to this other couple. It was, I've literally got about 34 life stories and I've only been here for two days. It's magical. <laughs> Jane, are, are, Jane, are you pissed? No, how dare you? We went to the Apple last night. Uh, so I was last night, but because uh, we get free cocktails. But um, today, I'm a, a wee bit rough today, I'm not going to lie to you. We've struggled this morning. We've struggled. <laughs> Okay, um, I only wanted to ask one question, but I've just got your whole life story about your trip to London. <laughs> Listen, well, I'm telling you this as well. The last time me and Ken came down, we went to a brothel at three o'clock in the morning for a massage. So we're going to a show tonight. So we're going to try and find the same brothel. So you're going to a brothel to get a massage? Probably about three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Can you can you just save up all these stories, take notes yeah, of these stories, and, 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 and we'll get you on the podcast and you can tell us about that trip to London. We'll do a special on your trip to London in the brothel. Yes, we will do. And you enjoy yourself with the gorgeous Paul Riley. There will do. Go. There gorgeous he is. Gorgeous Paul Riley. Gorgeous Bye, Jane. Gorgeous. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye honey. Bye. 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 Oh, she is Isa. Oh, she's definitely she's Isa. Isa. She's Absolutely. Isa. So you can't shut her up. I know. You're doing your own me show. Tell us about that, Paul. Yes, I am. I'm doing my show. Um, it's called All Before My Time. Um, and it's part of a tour that I've been doing for, I don't know, maybe 18 months or something on and off. And um, it takes place in the month of March. Um, and yeah, you're welcome to come along, everybody. Um, it says do- special guest. It does say special guest. Uh, that's yes, and I can't tell you because it's part of the show. You see, so so the surprise on the night is the special guest. It's Brad and because Pitt. it's who Brad Pitt. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. It's Brad Pitt in Livingston, Musselburgh, East Kilbride, Correct. Greenock, and then Brad Pitt is going to Corby. Yes, he's coming with you to Oranmore in Glasgow, and Brad Pitt is finishing the tour with you yes, in the that, Palace Theatre exactly in right. Kilmarnock. He's doing he's, all the dates. He's contracted I, to he's, all the dates. I. Uh-huh. Is that a good he's, 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 Is that a world exclusive for us? Ah, he's a good egg. Aye, aye. <laughs> and where did you meet him? Um, East Kilbride. <laughs> <laughs> what was he doing there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. (laughs) What has happened in the last 10 minutes? (laughs) Jane's pissed. Paul's meeting Brad Pitt and East Kilbride. Do you remember that quiz question that I asked that night? Yeah, it was shit. No, it wasn't he? No, it was good. It was East Kilbride, but the roundabouts. No, when the art school went and fell. Oh, yeah, that's right, aye. And Brad Pitt and Peter Capaldi (laughs) raised 20 million quid for it. That's true. Again. I'm just holding your poster up so the people watching on YouTube can yes, see it. Yes, nice. I was in New Orleans and he rebuilt 
900 house. He's in I, New Orleans with his own money. I was in New Orleans and I got chased out by Hurricane Ike, which was three years after Hurricane Katrina. Yeah, I never told them my real name when I was there. Um, I know. And um, I got a, there was a, in the hotel, the letter came under the door and it just said mandatory evacuation. You need to get out of New Orleans. At that time you were there? Yeah, it was three years after Katrina. Okay. Um, and so I was frantically, oh, I forgot all about this story. I was frantically like trying, I was like, what am I going to do? So I, ma- I managed to get a hire car. It was out at the airport. So I got a taxi to the airport, got the hire car, brought it back to the hotel. And I says, right, we need to go. And I got a hotel in Atlanta, which is about 600 miles away from New Orleans. And I got there and I managed to get a hotel room because you couldn't get a hotel room because uh, the storm that was incoming. Um, and eventually I got one. It was $187. And I was like, that's perfect. And I took it. And I swear to God, this is we went into the, the hotel in Atlanta. And at the reception, the the guy said, Mr. Riley, would you like a drink? And I was like, at reception? I was like, no, I'm all right. I'm fine. It's got you a lovely room, absolutely beautiful room. And I was like, okay, thanks very much. Went up, went up the stairs, right? And went into the room. There was a grand piano in the room, right? And a pool table. And a separate kitchen and two bedrooms. And I was like, and I said, I remember I said to my wife, don't unpack for an hour. <laughs> In case I get it wrong. <laughs> and honest to God, we just sat and I knew I went by, I went, fuck it, that's it. Let's order room service as well then. And it turns out that because I was in such a panic, it was £1,871 for the room. <gasps> for one, for for one, one night. night! Aye, aye. One, one night! Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm not surprised you sat about for a new and did bugger all. Honest to God. I, didn't, I, I never knew that till checkout. And then I was like, oh, no wonder they were off wow. from you and you were there. I know, right? Wow. I know. So there you go. Wow. Um, so go and see uh, Paul Riley. He's, he's on tour. Uh, starts on the uh, the 4th of March. Yes. It's not, that's not long away. Is that? No, I know. Ah, it's 4th of March. Uh, right through to the uh, the 2nd of April. Mm-hmm. As Kat says, you're going to be in Greenock, you're going to be in Livingston, Musselburgh, East Kilbride, uh, Corby. Where's, yes. where's that about? It's Northamptonshire. Or oh, Northamptonshire. Uh, Glasgow, or more, a couple of nights at Oranmore. That's a great venue. I love that venue. Yes. And you're also at the Palace Theatres in Kilmarnock. And what we will do is we'll put a, a link to your website on the YouTube channel, etc., etc., etc. Which et is wallydugs.com. I was about to say that. What is the website? If you want to buy tickets, go and see the very funny Paul Riley and his very special guest, Brad Pitt. You'll get all the, you'll get all the details <laughs> on wallydugs.com. Wallydugs.com. How do you spell Wally? W-A-L-L-Y. And Dugs? D-U-G-S. All one word? Yes. Dot com? Yes. Wally Dugs? Yes, you F-A-N-N-Y. That's a touchy subject right now. Well, yes! What a way to end it, but we don't end it there, right? No, we don't right. end it there. So if you want to go to Paul's show, all the details are in the description below um, on YouTube. Wallydugs.com. Go and get yourself some tickets. Go and see Paul Riley. And I can guarantee, as you've already heard for yourself and watched it if you're on YouTube, uh, the boy is hilarious. He's got some amazing stories. Is that a Q&A thing as well? Yeah, can you yeah. ask questions as well? Absolutely. Brilliant. That'll be good. Um, okay, so this is a bowl Just of... to you or to Brad... Well, he's a bit, to be honest, he's a bit miserable. He's a bit miserable, eh? Um, So this is a bowl of destiny. He's a bit bit moany. Moany. Do you know what I mean? Brad Pitt moany, is he? Aye, aye. That's the bowl of destiny. Give me a fish supper. (laughs) Um, Wait, 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 let me explain first. All right. So this is a bowl of destiny. I thought I was doing a raffle. No, no, no. No, this is about you. All right, It's not about us, about you. The bowl of destiny, uh, there are a number of random questions in there. Okay. Okay, so... Yeah, when's well, no been fucking random enough yet? <laughs> <laughs> there's so many tangents. I know. Yeah. Um, so you pick a question, you yes. have a look at it, you read it to yourself, you can either answer that question or forfeit it. If you forfeit that question, you must then answer the next question that you pick out. So it's entirely up to you. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. So okay. pick it, either answer it or forfeit it. Okay. You might like the question. You might like it, it's up to you. So I'm up, I'm up then, right? Mm. Right, go on then. Uh, read it to yourself. You can either answer that question or forfeit it. Have you ever met Brad Pitt? <laughs> <laughs> and he's co-bride. <laughs> Would you like to answer that question or forfeit um, it? The the question. No, is, no, you don't need to tell us. So you don't want to answer it. Um, Are you going to answer that one? Do you want a new one? No, I think um, the question is: What age is best to start dating? 
Um, and I, I, I would say, um, run about the time I joined classical school. <laughs> Uh, normally, uh, we finish a show with a little performance from Cat. We oh. do. Hello. It's usually on my kazoo, but I uh, have forgotten it. You forgot oh. your kazoo for the second time. But I know that Paul Riley can sing and he's a musician, so anything you'd like to see us out with? Because we'll put the end titles over whatever the performance is. Now we it's can normally... clap, we can join in. So what would you like okay. to finish with, Paul? Um, okay, I'm going to sing uh, the Proclaimers thing. Which one? Please don't go rushing by Stay and make my heart fly I can't do any more <laughs> To get you side of my soul Because I never seem to know the time When you're with me You can tell it to the birds You and I'll tell the bees. Yay! Paul Riley, everybody. Go see shows all over Scotland. Goodbye, everybody. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>